3.7, writing a linear equation. All right, no, no problem. And for the most part, hopefully we understand that most of these are going to take the form of y equals mx plus b. And no, I do not remember if we talked about this yet. But it is something that we're going to talk about today because we're going to be writing these equations in this form. It's called slope-intercept form because m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So I hope it kind of makes sense that we would call it slope-intercept form. Uh, now, again, I don't know why M stands for slope. It seems like something, you know, like should be S, but maybe S is, <clears throat> excuse me, looks too much like a 5. So they kind of skipped it. And then B, again, I don't know why it's B when, <laughs> you know, maybe there's just too many Ys. I don't know. But the B represents the Y-intercept. So I, I kind of assume that the Greek words for slope and y-intercept start with B, but I could be completely wrong on that. Now, something you'll notice on this is it says that the y-intercept could be found with this formula. Now, this is a nice formula if you can memorize the formula, or some of you guys just say, well, look, I could just manipulate this equation right here, just like we did in 1.9 in, in order to uh, change this into a B equals. It'd be like solving for B on that, king. Okay? Uh, and then x, x1 and y1, you know, that's more from the slope, but this would be y1 and x1. It, that's just comes from if they give us a, uh, an ordered pair. And I, I forget if they do that in this section or not. We'll find out. All right, well, oh, this is, uh, I do like this type of problem. Find the equation of the line with slope negative 11 and passing through the point 0, 7. So we'll write this equation in the form y equals mx plus b, right? So y equals m, which is the slope, times x plus b, which is the y-intercept. It's just the y-value in the y-intercept, by the way. And sure enough, they did give us the slope on this one at negative 11. Right there, yeah, negative 11. So take, take the m and just replace it with negative 11. No need for parentheses on this one because it's forming the equation. And then the b, which is the y-intercept, is 0, 7. But again, we're, we don't actually write this as an ordered pair. It's just the y-value there, which in this case is 7. Now, this is positive 7, so we show it as plus 7. If it had, if it had shown 0, negative 7, we would have just written it as minus 7 as the term negative 7. Okay, so we need a, that's going back to, I think it was 1.2. We gotta know the difference between the terms, and a term takes the operation to its left as its sign, so that plus makes it positive. So if it were negative, we'd show it as minus. So same thing on this one, it tells us the slope is 61 over 7, it's just a fraction, and again that would tell us the rise and run on that, and then it passes through this point 0, negative 14. So we'll write the equation in slope intercept form. So we'll just you know tack this in right now. Y equals mx plus b. M is the slope, y, uh, B is the y-intercept, and sure enough, yep, like we said before, we got the slope there, so I replaced the M, the slope, with the slope, which in this case is 61 sevenths. All right, now, again, if we were to graph this, it would tell us the rise and the run from there, but not necessarily in this case, and um, the y-intercept uh, is 0, negative 14. Now, how do we know this is the y-intercept? It's because the x value is 0. All right, that's crucial to remember. If the x value was not a 0, then we would know it is not the y-intercept and would have to use a different method to find the y-intercept. Okay? But in this case, it is 0, so we just write in uh, minus 14 because it's a negative 14, just like we talked about on that last problem. So this is the equation in slope-intercept form. All right, when you have the slope and a point, you can use point-slope form of a line. That's this one here at the bottom. Uh, you can also use slope-intercept, but you'll have to use the slope. Uh, you'll have to solve for the y-intercept first. And that's where this formula business comes in to play. Otherwise, we're going to be using point-slope form, all right? Now, I'm going to point this out. I think I talked about it a little bit last time. In the homework, they're going to want to see it like this. Y minus y1 equals m, parentheses, x minus x1. Uh, and then that would be it. But I prefer to write it like we have up here, right here, because it also it moves this. See that minus y one? You'd have to add add this to both sides anyway. So I prefer just to write it like this because it solves directly for y without 
having to put in this extra step, which will happen every time unless the y value itself is a zero. Now again, do you need to use this? No, you don't have to. It's not required. You could use the y-intercept formula as well. And uh, I, I find that it, it varies depending on the class. I've seen it as high as like 80, 20, uh, but as low as, I don't know, 30, 30 40, something like that. Okay, so it, it just depends on what you prefer, and if you prefer a certain method, use it. It's not required that you use a certain way. Uh, however, and again, this just goes back to the homework. Uh, I believe some of the homework requires you to write it in this format. All right, but again, if you wrote in the format and were like, well, uh, throw that in the garbage and then use this, that's fine. If that doesn't make sense right now, hopefully it will as we do a couple examples. So I'm going to start with this. And then I'll, I'll, I'll do a problem this way, and then I'll show you how to find this, the y-intercept this way. Because uh, if they give us a slope, then it, it's pretty quick either way. Uh, in the future, though, they may give us two points, which does not tell us the slope immediately. We'll have to find the slope between the two points, and then use one of these two. Uh, use this one, uh, point-slope form, or the y-intercept uh, formula. So here we go, this is a good one. Find an equation with, of the line with slope 11 and pass it through the point 520. Write your equation in the form y equals mx plus b. So again, on the homework, it would say, well, you got to write this as y minus y1 equals mx, uh, parentheses x minus uh, the x value there. And we can see that the y value is 20, so we replace the y value with 20. The x value is 5. And they did tell us the slope on this one is 11, right? So if you needed to write this in on the homework, that's how you would put it in. Um, but again, I would, I would just say, well, look, it doesn't really matter if we change this just a tiny bit where we know the slope is 11, the x value is 5, and the y value was a positive 20 right there, okay? And again, the, I, the only reason I do it like this is because it skips that step, okay? Well, from here, what you're going to have to do is distribute that 11 into the parentheses, right? So you got uh, 11x still, but now you got uh, minus 55, 5 times negative 5, and then plus the 20. Now, this all equals y, by the way, which is really what we wanted to do. So finally, just to simplify this, right, you would have y equals 11x. And then you'd combine the negative 55 and the positive 20 there to give you negative 35. And then it's been changed now into slope-intercept form. And that came directly from point-slope form. And then we'll use... Okay. I, I said we'd use slope-intercept form on this problem, but we didn't. That's okay. Uh, I'll probably do it on the next one. All right, find the equation of the line with a slope of 4 and passing through that point, we'll write our equation in the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to do this one both ways, all right? I'm going to show you with uh, point-slope form, and then we're going to show you, because they gave us a slope on this one, which was very generous, but I'll show you how to do it with the y-intercept formula as well, okay? So here we go. Let's do uh, point-slope form. So that's uh, y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1, right? And yeah, they did give us a slope up there is 4. And then we got uh, the x value is 8 and the y value is 33. So again, I'm showing this to you because you may have to type it into uh, the homework, okay? But again, I would have just written it like this with the 33 already on the right side, right? So, whoops. Well, last one, 4, x minus 8 in parentheses there, and then I would have just written it as plus 33, all right? Well, from here, just like we did on the last one, and just like you can imagine, you would distribute the 4 there to make that 4x, and then 4 times negative 8 is negative 32, and then plus 33. And so this is y equals this stuff. So y equals... The, the 4x still stays, and uh, again, that shows that the slope stays the same as 4. 
But now we've got to combine our negative 32 and positive 33 to get positive 1. So now that's been simplified into slope-intercept form. Uh, but like I said, since they gave us a slope, it's pretty quick to just use um, the y-intercept formula. And again, if you don't like it, don't worry about it, okay? But this would be the formula right there. Uh, B, push the wrong button there. All right, B equals, uh, it's the y value. So I'm assuming, yeah, yeah, y minus m, that's the slope, times the x value. Well, uh, just going off of what we we have, we got a y value, right? That's a 33 right there. And that was a bad 3 on the second part, sorry. We know the slope is 4, and we know the x value in the ordered pair is 8. There we go. All right, so when we solve this, we get b equals just uh, evaluating that 33 minus 32 is 1, right? Which is the same thing that we got on this one, okay? So when you, and we already had the slope from up here. So it, it, it kind of is a quick way to do it without having to use point-slope form. But again, on the, on the homework, you have to at least write the formula for that point-slope form stuff. All right, now I know we haven't done one like this, uh, particularly because this one doesn't give us a slope, all right? But I want you guys to try this one out. Just see if you can write this. The, the equation of the line that goes through these two points in slope-intercept form, all right? Take a minute and see if you can do it. All right, well, uh, one thing that we definitely need in uh, point-slope form is slope. But this one did not give us a slope. We're going to have to figure that one out on our own. So, uh, no problem on that, though, because M, we already have a slope formula, just like I think we did that last time, right? And we got, uh, I'm going to start with that first point at negative 7, 9, so... 9 and negative 7. Remember, uh, remember, the y values go on the top, x values on the bottom there, and then we got negative 2, 0, so something like this. And uh, yeah, we got a minus negative right there. And you know, if you, if you want to just plug this into the calculator, it would still give you the same thing. For me, though, it looks like we got, uh, well, I'm just going to make that negative 9 fifths. Uh, the 5 would be negative, but it doesn't matter where we put the negative in that fraction, all right? So already in. The formula, I've got a negative 9 fifths to put into the point-slope form. Now, now this is where, and this is kind of strange because it gets a little confusing for students, but you get to choose. you got two points to choose from, you guys. we got negative 7, 9, or negative 2, 0, and the choice is yours. Which one do you guys want to use? So let's do that, okay? We'll use negative 2, 0. So the x value is... Uh, I'll try to color code this. X value is negative 2, and the Y value is 0. And, you know, you could put minus 0 if you want. In fact, if you wanted to, you could just make that a phantom 0 right now. No problem, okay? Uh, which makes the calculation pretty easy, I would think. And, yeah, that's minus a negative right there, which is going to make that a plus. Uh, I don't like to see minus negatives. The double negative thing tends to throw us off. So if we can just uh, cancel that out as a plus sign overall, then... Hopefully that makes that a little bit easier. So we'll distribute this negative 9 fifths into the parentheses. So we got negative 9 fifths times x, which is simply negative 9 fifths x. And then over here we got negative 9 fifths times 2. And again, you know, if you want to do that in your head, that's fine. I'm going to show this in the calculator, though. It's negative 9 fifths times 2, which shows negative 18 fifths. So we'll write this in as negative, that was this distribution, negative 18 fifths. And yeah, it's minus 18 fifths on that. So y equals negative 9 fifths x minus 18 fifths. So that, that tells us now that the slope is negative 9 fifths and the y-intercept is negative 18 fifths. Bam, done. All right, now this one is not saying specifically that you have to use a specific method, and that's nice. It's good to have that type of freedom, especially when we have different methods that we can use. Uh, but in any case, it didn't get, it didn't tell us the slope, so we're going to have to find the slope one way or the other, right? So let's go ahead and figure out our slope on this one using the slope formula. And we got the first point at negative 6, 4, so negative 6, 4, and the second point at 5, negative 7. 
And uh, yeah, we got that minus negative business going on again. So I'm going to change that right now into a plus sign. Now the denominator, right, that's minus, it's a negative minus a value, which um, it doesn't change that to plus. It's just going to make it more negative on that negative 11. So 4 plus 7 is 11, and this would simplify just to negative 1. Okay, that's a fairly easy number to work with. Well, now let's look at that point slope form. Y equals M parentheses X minus the X value plus the Y value. And we just figured out the slope is negative 1. And again, we run into the point where you guys got to choose one of the two ordered pairs to use in this. All right, so 5, 7. So our X value is 5. So I replace that into the formula. And the Y value is negative 7. I, I just write that in as minus 7, of course which still shows that the term itself is negative 7. And then we'll go ahead and distribute. So I'll distribute the negative 1 into the x, which would be negative 1x. And yeah, if you want to turn that into a phantom one, that's fine. And then we got negative 1 times negative 5, which is positive 5. And yeah, we still got to subtract that 7 right there. So as of right now, this is what we have, but we can simplify this by combining like terms. I still got negative uh, 1x there but I can combine my 5 and negative 7 to get negative 2. And yeah, we'll just make that a phantom 1 just to say it's fully simplified, I guess, but I don't think, I, don't, I even think the homework would accept uh, if you had put the 1 there. Alright, here we go. Um, given these two points, negative 8, negative 4, and 0, negative 4, find its equation in slope-intercept form. You guys try this one. Take one minute. All right, here we go, you guys. Let's do this one as well, okay? Um, now, some of you guys noticed something interesting on this one, which is good. Uh, we're going to come to that here in just a second, okay? But let's look at this. And, yeah, we got to find the slope again. So M equals, we got um, the Y values on top, X values on the bottom, right? So we got negative 8, negative 4. And I also have 0, negative 4. So, yeah, you guys see that minus negative thing. I'm just going to make that a plus. I got negative 4 plus 4, which is 0, and negative 8 minus 0 is negative 8. And again, if you wanted to put that in the calculator, that's fine. But I got a slope that's 0 right now. Well, what does this mean? It means that when we go to point slope form, it does mean other things. I'm just kind of showing you what this would mean in point slope form. Uh, well, it's just the slope is 0. That's it. Okay. Well, in fact, it's going to neutralize everything on the inside of that uh, parentheses right there. Let, let's show that. And I know some of you guys are like, well, I'm going to use 0, negative 4. It's too easy. I'm going to use negative 8, negative 4. And, well, why are you using the one that's not as easy? I, there's a reason. I'll show you guys here in a sec, okay? Because uh, I'm trying to uh, emphasize something that's going on in this, if you didn't notice it from the beginning. Well, you distribute the 0 in there, and then you get, uh, well, 0x, which looks pretty good. And, uh, you know, if you change that to plus, that's fine. But zero times anything is zero. So you still got this minus four right here, right? And you could say, well, I could combine like terms. You could, or you could just make that a phantom zero. Either way, you end up with zero x minus four, right? Well, what the heck does this mean? It also means that if you wanted to change that zero x into a phantom zero, because anything multiplied by zero is zero, you could. So if you made it, a, that's a y, sorry about that. Uh, if you made it y equals negative 4, you're still good. Okay. Now, I, if I remember right, the homework will not accept y equals 0x minus 4. So I believe you do have to change that into a phantom 0. But let's go back. Okay. And once we figured out the slope, it, it should have been pretty easy because they actually gave us the y-intercept right there. Remember what I told you guys in the beginning? is if the x value is 0, you got your y-intercept, you're done, okay? Uh, and then since we have the slope already, you change that into a phantom 0, and you would have arrived at this conclusion a little bit earlier. So here's the equation. we got to write the equation of this line. Be sure to use the correct variable. Now, generally speaking, we would say, you know, you got to find two points on this line that you could then find the x and y values of, right? So we're looking for ordered pairs that have whole values. I probably wouldn't choose that one. I'd probably choose uh, definitely the one that goes for the y-axis, uh, which, by the way, tells us right there that b equals 0, 5. 
because this already shows, and we know the exact coordinates of this point where the red line is going through the y-axis. Well, then all, after that, all we got to do is figure out the slope, right? Well, it doesn't matter what two points. I'm going to use that one, though. And then, you know, I, I don't know if this one's so easy, but 10-5 um, should be pretty nice. And then we say, well, what is the slope since we know the y-intercept? Well, let's figure this one out. So we got uh, 0, 5. And then we got uh, 10, 5. All right, and if we solve this, we'd get uh, 0 over negative 10, which really is just 0, right? So again, this, this brings up that slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, but right there we see the m is 0, the slope is 0, and then we had that plus 5 up there as the y-intercept. Uh, but again, just like we saw on the homework, it doesn't want that 0x business, so just write it as y equals 5. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, if you guys understand that this is a y equals a number equation because it's flat, just, just write it, no problem. Uh, especially because, you know, we have another graph like this one, and if you knew right away that this one was just, well, x equals 10, uh, you know, there's no need to really show the work on this one. I'm still going to show it just because I think it's important for us to get some experience with uh, particularly the slope formula, right? And I know we did plenty of this last time, but I'd say, well, look at these two points right here, right? Uh, this first one is 10, 0, and this next one looks like it's 10, 10. So let's figure out the slope. And this is where it gets funky. I, I remember someone mentioned about uh, slope being undefined. This is an undefined slope where it's just straight up and down. So I got the point 10, 10, and then I've also got the point 10, 0. Well, simplifying this gives us 10 over 0, and that's undefined because the 0 in the denominator makes it undefined. All right. So, since it's undefined, it has to be an x equal equation, and then you just say, well, where does it cross the x-axis? Bam, right there, 10, and you're done. All right, look at this equation. We want to write it in slope-intercept form. No problem. We'll use reduced fractions if we need to. This is, just, this is strictly going back to, I think it was 1.9, right, where we learned about literal equations, just completely manipulating these things, bending them to our will, right? So this is, this like back then it would have said solve for y because it, we want it to be in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, y equals solve for y. So we don't want that negative 10 being added to the 4x, uh, sorry, the 4y, so we got to zero that out, okay? Now again, the, the 5 and this pos positive 10x or plus 10x, however you want to say it, they're not like terms, so we can't combine those, just like we wouldn't have in that previous section. Now the negative 10x plus 10x, that zeroes out, that's good. We'll drop the 4y, and this now equals 5 plus 10x. Well, the last thing we would want to do to solve this is to divide all the terms by 4 to make the coefficient of y a 1. So that gives us y equals 5 fourths, that's a 4, plus 10 fourths. So I'm going to simplify that into 5 halves of an x. Now this isn't exactly uh, slope-intercept form, right? Well, to say, well, it's formally slope-intercept form, you'd have to just switch the positions of these two terms, right? You, but, but they keep their value, so it's a positive 5 halves x, so keep it positive. And then the 5 fourths also is positive, so we're just going to write it as plus 5 fourths. All right, so this is, this is formal slope-intercept form now, and we can see the slope, and we can see the y-intercept. All right, let's talk about this parallel and perpendicular stuff, all right? So parallel... Uh, lines, lines that are parallel and perpendicular. The, the main thing we're concerned about, for the most part on these, is slope, right? So parallel lines, when we look at the slope, uh, and hopefully this kind of makes sense for us. If, like if you think about a graph like this one with an x-axis and a y-axis, if you had two lines that had the same slope, 
and we'll pretend like I drew these like they had the same slope or that they're parallel. I think I gave it away, dang it. Um, if they were parallel, they have to have the same slope, right? So the slope for parallel lines is the same. Now, there's something else that we need to think about on these two is sometimes they can be the same and uh, they can kind of like be right on top of each other like this one. So uh, another thing about parallel lines that we would want to think about is, well, it's okay if they're parallel and if it's the same line, but if they're different, then they should have different y-intercepts. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm only concerned about the slope right now. In, in the future, would would worry about the y-intercepts being different. Now, perpendicular lines. Um, well, I don't know if that would really make a ton of sense, but uh, let's let's draw a line on this graph right here. And we've got our x-axis and y-axis there. So let's look at a uh, purple line, maybe like this one. If I had a line that was perpendicular to it, it's, it has to make a 90 degree angle, and that's what that green mark is, that little box is, to indicate that it creates a 90 degree angle. Um, a T, I guess, some students like to think about it that way. Well, what does this mean about the slopes? Well, there's two things about the slope, right? This, the slopes of lines like this, the slopes are, one, they're going to be opposites, And just think about this, okay, the opposite thing, okay? If, I, if you look at this purple line right here, that has a negative slope, and the red one has a positive slope. They have to be opposites because they're, well, they're going in different directions that way. Okay, but also, they're opposites, and also, maybe you guys will remember this word. Reciprocals. Okay, so for perpendicular lines, and, and again, for parallel lines, the slope is easy. They're just the same, but perpendicular lines, and I'm going to do this abstractly, okay? So I would say uh, you got a fraction A over B, and this, that would be numbers, of course. Uh, if you wanted the perpendicular lines, and that's the sign for perpendicularity, uh, perpendicularness, I don't know. Uh, it just, it re it reciprocates the fraction, so now it's b over a, but then you've got to take the opposite as well. Okay, so if your first fraction that you get is negative, then you change it to a positive. If it's a negative, I'm sorry, if it's a positive, then you change it to a negative. But you always flip that fraction uh, to make it a perpendicular slope. So we've got to write an equation that's parallel to this one and passing through the point uh, 1, negative 16. But right now, the way that it's written, we don't have the slope. This one's written in standard form. That's no good. So we need to change it up. Right, so we've got 7x plus y equals negative 7. I'm going to change it into slope-intercept form so that we can see what the slope is. Now, technically, that minus 7 doesn't really matter because we're just worried about the coefficient of x, which is the slope. So I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. And I'm going to split those up right now. So I've got uh, y equals negative 7x and negative 7. Okay, so again, we can't combine those because they're not like terms. But this at least tells us what the slope is, negative 7. So a parallel line will have the same slope. And right now we see the slope is negative 7. So we know the slope has to stay negative 7. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into point slope form y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. And they gave us one point to use. And yeah, we do know the slope on that. Right? They said, well, it, the line that's parallel, it's going to go through the point 1, negative 16. So I got an x value that's 1 and a y value that's negative 16. So I can distribute right here, right? I got negative 7 times x is negative 7x. And negative 7 times negative 1 is now positive 7 but still minus 16 right there. So I got y equals this stuff. Uh, and then finally to combine the like terms, right, we still got a slope of negative seven times the x, but I need to combine these seven and negative 16 should give me negative nine. And this equation here would be the one that represents a perpendicular, I'm sorry, 
this one's parallel. It's a parallel line that goes through the point 1, negative 16. This would be its corresponding y-intercept right there. So this one's perpendicular, so it's going to change the, the slope a little bit on this one. And, uh, well, it's kind of nice of them to make this the coefficient of y just a phantom one. So we got negative 11x plus y equals negative 6. And uh, if there was a coefficient of y other than this phantom one, then we'd have to end up doing some division on this stuff, which, you know, it, it doesn't mean it should be any more difficult because we could use a calculator for it, but it's nice when it's a phantom one. So right here, we're going to add 11x to both sides so that it changes into slope-intercept form. Uh, so that zeroes out. We'll drop the y. y equals, and again, we keep these two terms separated because they're not like terms. Well, I don't really care about that minus 6 right there because the only thing I really am concerned about is that 11x, right? Or just 11, sorry. Well, if I wanted a slope that's perpendicular to that slope, Right now the slope is 11. To make it perpendicular, we're going to reciprocate it. Now if you're wondering what, what the, you know, there's no fraction here. Uh, it's really 11 over 1, which means we can reciprocate it to be 1 over 11. But not only reciprocate it, but we need the opposite as well. So the slope that we want is this negative 1 over 11. Now that we know what the slope is, and we know what point... This is going to go through, right, negative 14, 2. We can start with our uh, point slope form on this stuff. So we know the slope. It's negative 1 over 11. Let's put that in there. Try to keep it color-coded anyways. And in the point that they gave us, so this, we know the, the parallel, I'm sorry, the perpendicular slope, negative 1 over 11. But then they told us it has to go through this point. So... Uh, again, this, that means that it, has, it would make it true. So when we plug these values in, even though we're not really seeing any truthfulness with it, um, it would make it true. Okay. So now that we have that, and yeah, I do have that minus negative 14. I'm going to change that to plus just so we don't get it mixed up right there. Okay. And let's go and distribute our negative 1 over 11 there. Negative 1 over 11x. Um, that's going to be, well, I'll show you guys in the calculator here, actually. So we got a fraction. It was uh, negative 1 over 11. And we're going to multiply this by 14, right? So I got negative 14 elevenths from that distribution. And then we still got that plus 2. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to stay on the calculator here because, sorry, I'll move that over, there we go. Uh, because I still want to calculate negative 14 elevenths plus 2, right? So the nice thing would be to just plug this into the calculator and be done with it instead of having to do that math in our head. So negative 14 elevenths plus 2. So now you guys notice I just pushed plus and then 2. I didn't have to rewrite the negative 14 elevenths because that was my answer, so uh, by doing that, the calculator knows I just want the answer plus 2. I push equals, and I get a positive, from this I get a positive 8 elevenths. So this would be our slope-intercept form for the equation that is, for the line that is perpendicular to negative 11x plus y equals negative 6, uh, and it also goes through the point negative 14, 2, and like I said, this, this point, negative 14, 2, it has to make the, this equation true, right? And if you plugged in negative 14 and 2, you would get a true statement there.